Hi, I'm Dave Ingebretson, and along with me at Roy Hyatt, we'd like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying the Angler's Art. And as uh, we always say, we've got, uh, we think, three pretty interesting things for you tonight. The first one's going to be a very unusual damsel nymph imitation that Leroy tells me is a hot, hot pattern. It's simply called a bead damsel, I guess. And then we're going to tie one of the patterns I created. It's a, a mylar smolt, just a smolt pattern. And we're going to finish up with, uh, what are we going to finish up with? Your uh, steelhead fly. Oh, yeah, my steelhead fly, a modified polar shrimp. Okay. It's not my pattern, but it's one that I really like. It's a very, it's a pretty pattern. And so we'll try uh, to tie all three of those for you tonight, starting out with uh, the bead shrimp. Or bead, bead damsel. Uh, oh, boy. Bead damsel. Well, Some this is a to get crazy <laughs> pattern. Probably not very many people will see it. The fly will have eyes in it. Now, these are just little monofilament eyes that's been burned and, and uh, bulls, forms a little ball on each end. The main body is going to be tied with green beads. These are just glass beads you can get in any sewing shop or hobby shop at all. The body will be dubbed green. The uh, wing and tail section will be, this happens to be a muskrat that's been dyed an olive. You could use an olive marabou or a any feather been dyed olive, and I will use a green thread. Now I have a 2x long hook in the, in the vise. I have pinched the barb, what and size? I have put, this is a size 10, I have put five of these little beads on here. Now, I have not tied them in place. They are still loose. I'm going to come back here to the back. and now just This is a wet fly type hook. This is a wet fly. A standard wet fly, but in 2x yes, long. Yes, 2x long. Now, the tail material, I'm going to take just a little bit of this muskrat. You don't need a whole lot. It's very loose. It's very uh, flexible in the water. does some really nice things. And you're going to leave guard hairs in there? I'm going to leave guard hairs in it. Tie it in place. I'm going to come in here and trim that butt section off. And I'm going to take just a very, very small amount of this dubbing and make just a little ball back here. The only thing that is going to be for is just to keep those glass beads from sliding off the end of the hook. That's the only thing it's for. And I can see I have way too much on there. Well, that's dubbing made out of that same olive muskrat. No, this is just a synthetic uh, dubbing that I've just mixed together, just to have just that green coloration. Again, I'm sure you could use lots of different color. I have also used this uh, this fly with brown beads and a, just a soft hackle in the front. Again, works very, very well. I'll put just a small whip finish back here. You know, beads have gotten to be very popular at a variety of ways and uses mm -hmm. as the bead head flies mm -hmm. uh, and now this is a newer use that uh, has recently become popular. Now I've started to thread back in the front. I'll wrap back tight against those beads. I'm going to come up here and take one of these little eyes and this is I guess probably more for the fisherman than the fish. Now tell us again Although how you made the eyes. These are just a, uh, well you can buy them this way already made or you can take monofilament about a 30 pound and mm. just burn the ends of it. It's all you need to mm. do. Yeah, when you burn the ends, do they naturally ball they up? Do you have to pat them on something? Up like that. No, they'll ball up pretty good. They really okay, will. Okay, what, maybe hold it in a long nose pliers or mm -hmm. a hemostat You've or something? A pair of uh, tweezers, anything mm -hmm. like that. Now I'm going to take another section of this muskrat, put a little bit of it out. This will become the wing. Behind the eyes, Cinch it down. Now that's kind of interesting. This is the the damsel nymph, but yet you're putting a wing on it to give it that action. It gives uh -huh. it that swimming action. I I know it's not genetically correct, but that's. Then we'll just put some more of this dubbing on. This I will keep a little bit sparser. And I'm just going to fill in the area up here in front that doesn't have anything on it. I tied some of these for a guy that went over and fished the Blackfoot Indian Reservation this summer, and he said it was just an unbelievable damsel pattern for him over there. And for those of you who aren't familiar, this is a western uh, 
uh, re uh, reservation that's got many, many lakes with very large trout in it. Extremely and large. And it's uh, float tubers paradise. You go mm -hmm. over there and uh, get a permit to fish the reservation. But I think it would work in any, any still water like well, that. Well, I think it would work even in places that don't have dam natural dam. <laughs> I'm sure it might. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll put a little head cement on this. But it, you can see it gives a very, very nice silhouette. I'll get a little head cement and roll that a little slower. There's the bead damsel. Nothing but glass beads for the body. The fly is virtually indestructible. Well, and look at the reflection and the translucency in the light that comes through that. And this, this wing will wave back and forth very, very light. That's the bead damsel. It's got dyed uh, olive marab or muskrat for the tail and wing. The green glass beads little black eyes in it and more green dubbing. Well, now, Leroy, you've shown me a lot of new patterns that you knew about that I didn't, and uh, now here's one that I showed you that we can tie for the people. Uh, I just called it a smolt pattern, and I came up with it a number of years ago uh, before I took a trip to the Northwest Territories. Uh, we tied these up to represent small bait fish, and we used mm -hmm. them for catching lake trout. We caught a lot of small lake trout up to uh, 12, 15 pounds on them. Of course, up there, the lake trout, you know, go up to 40, 50 pounds, right. so those are small ones. But since that time, I've found that it's good wherever you need a pattern uh, for uh, bait potato fish. bait fish. Bait. Uh, smallmouth bass uh, works very well in rivers for smallmouth. Mm -hmm. I've caught uh, coho salmon on it, both in the salt water and the fresh water. And it's just a good all-around minnow pattern. Uh, my smoke. why don't you go ahead and... Uh, Tell them what we're okay, the body material will be tied with mylar tubing or piping, some people call it. We'll have two different colored bucktails. We'll have a blue bucktail for the lower wing, the purple bucktail for the overwing, and I'll use a standard 6 aught tying thread. I have a 4X long size 4. And of course, you'd vary that depending on what size you bait fish you wanted. With, you yeah. bet. I'll go ahead and dress this body, even though it, I don't need to because there's not going to be anything tied in the center of it. It's just a habit that I have, and I just do it all the time. You want to leave your thread hanging now about at the end of the shank where the shank starts to bend. Right. And then I'll measure this and cut a section of this piping off. I might say a word about that piping. You can find it in sewing shops, uh, you know, materials, uh, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. They use it for trim on clothes. And uh, uh, it uh, comes. no clothes that I wear, but uh, <laughs> it comes in a variety of diameters. This is fairly large. You can get it smaller sizes. And it smaller comes with hooks. some string core in it yeah. that you need to get rid of. You need to get rid of those. Then I'll just run it on the hook. And if it isn't already done so, I usually uh, uh, loosen up the, uh, the mylar piping at the rear so we've mm -hmm. got some loose fibers. And they extend back from the hook to represent the tail of the fish. And then we'll tie it down now. Sometimes when people do this, they'll put an, uh, uh, an underbody of foam to give it a solid uh, underbody. Yarn. Yarn, or sometimes they actually cut uh, out of pop cans and bend around to give it a deep belly shape. But uh, I don't find a need to go to all that trouble. Uh, I just tie it in, I do a little whip finish there at the back, and then cut your thread off and bring it forward. And I've uh, just restarted that thread now. If you don't want the thread at the rear at the tail to show up, you can use a white thread, and mm -hmm. when you put head cement on it, uh, it more or less disappears. Some people will tie it in with a red band or whatever. But after you tie it on, uh, put a little head cement on it to fix it in place. Now when we come forward to the forward end, we want to bind that down so there are no projecting uh, right. mylar like there was at the back end. Right. I've moved back from the, the eye of the hook quite a little ways. One leave room for a fairly good size head, but look at when you uh, squeeze that down between your thumb and your It'll finger. It gives it a nice minnow shape. Bend down the same. And that mylar piping looks great, like scales. Mm -hmm. Now I'll take a small clump of this blue. And, and again, get... you can use any colors. You can have a three color, you can have uh, white, black, and blue, or white and black and green, or white and blue and green. But like in regular natural, I mean in any natural, almost always the body, uh, the uh, top will be much darker than the, right. than the belly section. And often you'll have a dark 
lateral line down mm -hmm. the side. So you can uh, use your own creativity here. The colors. So this will be about the length of the body, back to the tail, back maybe the slightly tail. longer. Yeah, I, I usually go like to the end of the tail. And I'll bind it. And down. I usually don't stack the fibers. That gives it a nice uh, mm -hmm. tapered shape. Now I'm going to raise this. Yeah, this is the trick uh, to keeping the color bands separated. After you tie it in, before you let go, you lift it up, and then you make a turn, a couple of turns around the base of the thread, pulling it in tight, mm -hmm. and then tie it down. Now you've got a nice discreet clump, and on like a Mickey Finn or a black nosed dace, anything where you want to keep the color bands distinct. That's the way I do it. Now, there are other ways, but that's the way I do it, and it, it seems to work uh, for me better than any other way I've found of keeping them separated. Okay, now I'll just bind this down just a little bit, just to make mm -hmm. sure that it's all locked in place. Now, this second band of color can be about the same size, or if you've had three colors, you might want the middle band sparse. Reduce it. And uh, reduce it. Use your own judgment on that. But here again, will strip out the short stuff and when you tie it in first bind it down and then before you let go of it lift it up and make those couple turns around the base. Mm -hmm. Be sure that after each turn around the base you pull the thread in tight against the uh, tie down threads. And this will be about the same length as right. the first one. Right. So I'll lay it on. I'll take a couple of quick wraps make sure it's down right. good. Now lift it up no, I'll okay. lift. If I can get rid of some of the blue that's there. Okay, now the now go around. turn around the base. Just flip it over, pull it tight. Now make one more. Flip around, pull it tight. Now let go, and with any luck at all, we should see that those color bands are very uh, separate and distinct. That's the effect we were. Look at that. See how there's there's no spreading stand, of the colors yeah, at all. Yeah, stand right out. Yeah. Now I'll put a little of the uh, rubber base on there, and then I'll just wrap down. Yeah. Now using large uh, bunches of materials, the head will be fairly large, but that's appropriate to a minnow. And uh, some people, even I've seen, use this pattern paint eyes on the side, uh, maybe white eyes or white eyes with a dark pupil in it. Uh, Frankly, I don't usually go to that trouble, but uh, it does make a good-looking pattern when you paint eyes mm -hmm. on it. Take yeah. a few more wraps here, and then I'll put a whip finish on it. Yeah. Nicely tapered head. That's a good-looking fly. Clip that off. Uh, and there's the, the shrimp. Let's we'll hold the black no, background. The I mean, the, uh, uh, <laughs> what do we call it? Uh, the... Uh, Smolt. Smolt. <laughs> I went blank myself. Talk about a mental lapse. But that will, uh, that gives the uh, definite distinction between the two yeah. wing colors. Yeah. And for the smolt pattern, what we've used is a mylar tubing for the body and tail section. The wing, the double wing, is blue and purple bucktail. Now we're going to finish up with a steelhead fly, and it happens to be one of my three favorite steelhead flies. You know, there are hundreds, maybe thousands of steelhead patterns, oh, sure. and I don't know that it really makes a difference to the fish as much to the fisherman, but I think that I need a dark fly, and I like the skunk or the green butt skunk, and in between fly is the purple peril, and we've tied both of those before in the series. Mm -hmm. This last one, I think you need a bright fly, and my bright fly is this modified version of the polar shrimp. We'll talk more about the modifications later, but why don't you show us what we're going to use to tie it. Okay, for the tail section, we'll use orange hackle fibers. We'll use uh, orange chenille for the front third of the fly. We'll use silver tinsel for the tag and the rear two-thirds of the fly. The wing will be white calf tail. I'm using a standard orange thread. Well, as far as hook size, I tie these things in Oh, eight, six, four, and two. Uh -huh. I think we're using a four here, aren't we? This is a, a size four, standard steelhead hook, loop eye. And I'll run this to the rear. Now, we, while you're doing that uh, and setting up for the tag, uh, the original Alaska polar shrimp, it was called, uh, has the, the body is entirely of chenille. Mm. And uh, someone named Tully, I don't know any more about him than that, uh, somebody named Tully 
uh, made this modification of tying the back one third uh, out of the silver, back two thirds out of the silver tinsel, and also did something very neat. You'll see when we wrap that front hackle. Okay. Uh, that's a little bit different in the modification, and we'll talk about that when it comes time to do it. Okay, I've tied the tag in. I tied the tag so it just started over the bend of the hook. And now we'll tie a wing section in. Here, I'm going to get rid of that. Wing. I tail. mean, a tail section. I'll grab just a few fibers off of this orange hackle and get them separated out. I'll take just a few more from this side. Get them as even as I can and tie it in. Now, again, you, you'll want to bind those down very well because you're going to have a silver tinsel silver rear two-thirds of the body, yes. and so we want, don't want a lot of bulk there. So I didn't trim any of that tail section off at all. I just left it there. And now we'll get the silver two-thirds or silver tinsel to go the last two or the first two-thirds of the body. And I'll get this about up to where we'll stop. And then we'll just start wrapping this, keeping it as close together as you can. Now, I know sometimes you like to double wrap this. Well, I was going to say here again is how we vary. I, I double wrap mine. I start forwards, wrap back and forwards. Mm -hmm. But it's entirely a uh, personal preference. And I want to stop about right there. I'll bind this down with a couple of wraps, and I'm going to fold it over and do it again. That's that's a good trick for people Make to, to totally realize because you lock it place. in and you, you're yes. not going to lose it. Now I'll tie in a little bit of orange chenille. Now this is just a standard orange. You could also use a fluorescent yep. orange on this. And I guess I usually do, but it doesn't matter. And again, when you tie in chenille, be sure you strip some of that fuzz out of there so you get a, a you don't get a large lump when mm -hmm. you tie it in. And then here we come you forward. Build it up so it's uh, really like a ball. Oh, you want me to go over it once more to build it up? Yeah, I bit. would. Okay. Uh, I would make it fairly plump. I'd go over it even two or three times more, and make a nice round ball. Yeah, on that's that got looks a pretty, pretty good. good ball. That's right pretty there. good. Yeah. I usually don't do that. Mm -hmm. I usually just tie the one end. Yeah. No, uh, I, I think the, the as I understand it, the way Tully modified it in. At least the way I always do is I want a pretty good ball. I, I don't know, this might represent a salmon egg. Oh, I'm sure it probably does. Uh, and that's, that's why I, I do that. Mm -hmm. Now I just took a small section of calf tail, and I'm going to even this. Again, may not be necessary at all, but it does make the fly look a whole lot better. And I'm going to comment here, as I've told you off camera, uh, I admire your flies so much because they're so sparse and neat and I think most people, myself included, most of the time use way too much material. Oh, almost everyone will use and too much. I, I'm sure. So I would encourage you to watch what Leroy does and see how neat that is. And of course it makes for a neater head, a neater fly, a stronger fly because you've got the individual fibers bound down better. Well, and you don't need all that bulk in there. No. And uh, this is something I've really become aware of since I've been doing the show with you and watching you tie. Because your flies uh, look so e efficient. Efficient? Okay. Well, what, uh, you know, there's not a lot of extra <laughs> junk in there. All yeah. right, I'll pull another hackle off of here. I'll get rid of that lower section. We don't need it at all. Now, what I'm going to tell you before you start, I know you know this, but I'll tell the people, what uh, normally when Leroy ties a steelhead fly, you tie the wing in first, yes. and then you wrap the hackle, then you fold the wing back over. But we're mm -hmm. not going to do it this time. Uh, what we're going to do, and why we've done it this way, is we're going to wrap the hackle, but then the last inch or so of hackle, about the length of the wing, is going to be folded back over the wing. To make an overlay. And uh, it's the only fly I know of that's tied quite like this. Okay. It would be sort of a topping, I guess you'd call it, rather than an overwing. It could be, yeah. But uh, you'll tie in the hackle, now you'll wrap the hackle, always now you see, conscious. I've also left a little bit of bare stem Absolutely. there again to get it started right. Now he's always going to be conscious that when he comes up on that last turn or two of, uh, of hackle, he's going to judge it so he stops wrapping uh, when he's got just about enough of the hackle tip left to extend the length of the wing. If it goes a little bit longer or shorter, it's okay, but uh, because you can't always control that. When you get it so you think there's enough, 
uh, for the length you want, then tie the hackle down. Now you fold the hackle but, back but over the wing. Don't trim it. Don't trim it. Fold it all back. And now start winding your head and wind back towards the fly. And that will help hold that uh, hackle back. So I'll go just a little bit further here. Now, I don't know if I'm giving anything away to tell people this, but this is the first one of these you've tied, isn't it? The very first and one. He's never tied it before, so uh, you can see that it's, I was going to say how easy it is to tie, but uh, obviously it's not that easy. You're pretty darn good, but you see for the first one, that's turned out really well. To keep and, the fly, uh, I would make the next one, the wing would be a little bit shorter, That yeah. which would mean I'd make a little bit shorter hackle. Yeah, it? if you have control enough over the hackle that you've got to do it, but you pretty well have to uh, live with what you've got. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let maybe put take a, little, a look at that. Let me put a little yeah. head seam in on there put and we'll uh, on there. roll it around. And, and let's try it with a dark background too to see if that maybe pops it up a little bit. But I like think it's any. just such a pretty fly. With any steelhead fly, I would definitely give this two coats of oh, yeah. cement. But to me, that little orange hackle topping back there, it just it's just a very pretty, attractive fly, and I guess that's why I use it, and that's why I have confidence in it. There you see it. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? Nice job, Leroy. Thank you. And that's a modified polar shrimp. We've got a silver tag. We have an orange tail. Rear two-thirds of the body is silver flat tinsel. The front two, uh, third is orange chenille. The wing is white calf tail. The hackle is orange. And the overwing or the dressing, whatever you want to call it, is the rest of the hackle, the orange hackle. You know, Leroy, we've, we've tied uh, three neat flies again, but maybe it's we've got a little time here. It would be appropriate to tell a little bit more about that uh, smoke pattern because it is such a versatile pattern you can do a lot with it. Uh, I mentioned that I originally came up with the pattern before I went to the Northwest Territories to fish lake trout. Uh, we tried it in even bigger sizes, but we, we were fishing Great Bear Lake and Great Slave Lake, which are huge freshwater lakes. And we found that we did not do well on flies there uh, because the lakes were so big and the fish mm -hmm. were so spread out we really had to troll with, with big, heavy uh, spoons and daredevils and things. To get down deep enough. To, well, to get down deep enough and to cover a lot of water to find the fish. We could get down deep with a shooting head, but to stand there and cast when we didn't know if the fish were there, we had mm. to troll to find them. Where well, we found this was effective is if we got in a stream between two lakes oh, yeah. where there was a current. Then using a sinking tip line or a shooting head, whatever was appropriate to get down, we could use these uh, patterns and we caught, oh, uh, Lake trout up to 10, 12 pounds, really? and they really, well, they just ate them up. Mm -hmm. Really good fly. But we also said that it, in a sense, we've found that it was a great fly in Alaska for cohos, both in the salt and in the fresh water, and in the uh, streams, we've caught smallmouth on it. Mm -hmm. uh, you could tie it in different sizes and different colors different to make colors. a good trout fly, and you could tie it with gold as well as uh, for the silver. Tubing. For bass, you could tie this as a red or a yellow underwing, and you could Absolutely. tie it black on top. Yeah. Tie it smaller sizes. Tie it smaller too. sizes, and if you do smaller sizes, you're going to need smaller different size piping. type. Yes. But this is just a starting point. It isn't that you should slavishly imitate this pattern, no. but use it to create your own patterns that are going to work for you. The point I'm trying to make here is that this is a, a very versatile fly. Mm -hmm. You can tie it in a lot of different sizes a lot of different colors and you shouldn't necessarily just slavishly follow this pattern for a lot of different fish for a lot of different fish anytime you want a bait fish imitation tied in the appropriate sizes in the appropriate colors and uh, it's a great fly because it looks like a little bait fish mm -hmm. well tonight we've tied the modified polar shrimp we've tied your bead uh, damsel nymph and we've tied uh, this uh, smoke pattern of mine we hope we've given you some ideas and some uh, new tricks that will help you tie better flies and catch more fish. And until we see you again next time, we thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll be looking for you again. So long. Dave and Leroy have produced a new 90-minute video on fly tying techniques. To order a copy, call the number on your screen. These tips are only $28.95 plus $3.95 shipping and handling. Please have your credit card ready and call one 800 
883-0124 to order fly tying techniques. You can also order the programs in this series. There are three programs on each 90-minute tape for $22.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-883-0124 and order your fly tying videos or the techniques tape. Thank you.